Hey everyone, we are back with another Shadowlands Dungeon Trash Guide. In these videos, we break down all the trash and their abilities, spells, buffs, and debuffs. And today we'll be going through the Theater of Pain in Maldraxxus. This is probably one of my favorite dungeons in Shadowlands. There's not a massive amount of different mob types, but there are some pretty impactful spells that you'll want to know about to make your M plus run much smoother. Before we get into the trash, don't forget that all of this information is on a spreadsheet that is linked below, and at the end I will be recapping the more impactful mobs and spells. So alright, let's do this. The Theater of Pain in Maldraxxus. Now the first three mob types you will encounter is the Unyielding Contender, the Battlefield Ritualist, and the Raging Bloodhorn. The Unyielding Contender will cast Vicious Strike on the highest threat target, dealing a large amount of physical damage, and also buff themselves with Death Wish, causing them to deal 20% increased physical damage. A Vicious Strike can hit pretty hard, but with normal mitigation it's easily dealt with. The only other ability they have is Charge, which reduces the movement speed of the target by 70%. The charge seems to randomly target anyone within the 8 to 25 yard range, but you can pretty much ignore it as it doesn't do damage. I mean, it might be slightly annoying on Spiteful or Mechanic, but mostly it's just a non-mechanic. Battlefield Ritualist casts two spells and can be CC'd in various ways. Unholy Fervor is a 1.5 second cast that heals the target for 6% of the maximum health each time they inflict damage. Necrotic Bolt is a 2 second cast that inflicts a moderate amount of shadow damage to the highest threat target and absorbs a moderate amount of healing. Just lock these casts down and this mob will just fall over with no issue. The Raging Bloodhorn only casts one ability and can't be CC'd. Raging Tantrum inflicts a moderate amount of physical damage every 2 seconds for 4 seconds to enemies within 50 yards. It sounds like this would only deal damage twice, but in my logs it shows 3 ticks. Either way, pop a defensive for this cast to decrease the incoming damage. After defeating the first boss, you'll be sent down below, and from there you will have to clear the three wings of this lower section. The southeast wing is the Chamber of Conquest filled with mobs that exclusively deal physical damage. You will first find Ossified Conscripts and Shambling Arbalists. Both are simple mobs that cast one ability and can be stunned and otherwise CC'd. And conscripts cast Coral Slash that does a moderate amount of physical damage to the highest threat target, and Arbalists do their best to stay at range, shoot, and targets a random player with Jagged Coral, dealing a moderate amount of physical damage and leaves behind a small dot. After these, you will encounter your first set of named contenders. Three times in this swing, you will see two contenders dueling. As you come close, one will die and the other will become active. Which mob you encounter is random for each run, and they are not CCable save one cast that can be interrupted, but their abilities are easily dealt with. The first set is Dokig the Brutalizer and Ekthara the Mangler. Dogig will cast Savage Flurry on the take, inflicting a moderate amount of physical damage every 0.5 seconds for 4 seconds. Brutal Leap will target a player and leap to the mark location after about 2 seconds. Anyone caught within will take a large amount of physical damage, so just avoid the area and you'll be safe. Lastly, Battle Trance is a 2 second interruptible cast that will surround the caster with a shield for 15 seconds and can absorb physical damage while increasing the caster's attack speed by 100% for the duration. Nekthara's Whirling Blade targets a player's location and hurls a weapon which inflicts a moderate amount of physical damage to players caught within. Whirlwind inflicts a large amount of physical damage to enemies caught within the 10 yard circle after a 2.5 second cast. Move quickly to avoid the damage or stay out of range completely to avoid it. Interrupting Roar is a 2.5 second cast that interrupts spell casting and inflicts a moderate amount of physical damage to all enemies. As long as you aren't casting a spell when this goes off, you don't have much to worry about. The next set of contenders is Harugia the Bloodthirsty and Heaven the Breaker. Harugia also casts Battle Trance, so be on the lookout for that. And he also casts Ricocheting Blade, which inflicts a moderate amount of physical damage to a player every 2 seconds for 6 seconds. Now this can also ricochet to anyone within 5 yards of the targeted player, so just spread out from your party when targeted with this ability and avoid the circle. Bloodthirsty Charge charges a random player dealing moderate physical damage to anyone caught within the 8 yard circle. Again, just move out of the circle to avoid all damage. Heaven the Breaker also casts Interrupting Roar, just like Nekthara. He will also cast Colossus Smash, which causes the tank to take 50% increased physical damage for 10 seconds and deals a moderate amount of physical damage, so have some active mitigation rolling for this hit. Lastly, Ground Slam deals a large amount of physical damage and stuns all players caught within the 20 yard frontal cone for 1 second, so I'd set the mark location to avoid the damage. After this set of contenders, you will find an Ancient Captain. This mob buffs the enemies around him with commanding presence, causing them to take 75% less damage from area of effect spells and increases their damage dealt by 25%. The captain will also attempt to cast Demoralizing Shout. This 2 second interruptible cast will reduce all players damage dealt by 50%. There isn't anything else in this pack to interrupt so just keep an eye out for this ability to avoid the debuff. Lastly, the captain periodically casts Shield Bash on the highest threat target inflicting a moderate amount of physical damage and interrupting spell casting for one second. This mob is able to be stunned and otherwise locked down so focus him to get rid of the buff from the rest of the pack. And the last set of contenders is Advent Nevermore and Wreck the Hardened. 
Advent casts Ricocheting Blade as seen from Hurugia in the last set of contenders, and also casts two other abilities. Seismic Stomp inflicts a moderate amount of physical damage to enemies within 60 yards of the caster. This is just unavoidable damage that you'll have to deal with. An Unbreakable Guard blocks all attacks from the direction that the shield is placed. When the shield is up, just move to the other side of Advent and continue to DPS. Wreck the Hardening casts Swift Strike, increasing his attack speed by 50% and causing his melees to strike two secondary targets for 30% damage for 12 seconds. This is just going to cause a little extra damage to any other melee at your party, so healers keep an eye out if they get low. Unbalancing Blow inflicts a moderate amount of physical damage to the highest threat target and reduces their dodge, parry, and block chance by 100% for 8 seconds. This is a good time for tanks to use other mitigation available to them such as ignore pain or heals, but between the mob casting and other abilities and it generally not hitting too hard, it should not cause too much of an issue until maybe a higher keys. Lastly, Wreck will cast Whirlwind, which is just a copy of the same ability as Nekthar from the beginning of the wing. Just run out to avoid the damage. Heading to the right from this wing, you will find the Altars of Agony. Now, this wing is filled with undead mobs, and nearly all of them cast shadow damage spells. Now, as you enter, you will first find Shackled Souls. Soul Touch is a quick, uninterruptible cast that deals a small amount of shadow damage to a random player. And Bind Soul is a 6 second interruptible channel that inflicts a small amount of shadow damage to their target every 1.5 seconds and also reduces the target's movement speed by 60%. The spell alone is not dangerous, but being slowed in this area makes it much harder to dodge the swirls on the ground from Necrotic Volley. This ability just causes swirls on the ground to appear that will cause a large amount of shadow damage to anyone standing in the circle when the volley lands. Interrupt what you can and use stuns, blessing of freedom, or anything else that will get you out of slows and avoid the volleys on the ground. And if you're able to line of sight the mobs around the corner at the end, you can avoid dealing with the volley and just DPS the souls down with little to no issue. Next up is the Portal Guardian. Now this mob will periodically debuff a player with Shadow Vulnerability, and this curse inflicts a small amount of shadow damage and increases their shadow damage taken by 30%. The Guardian will also cast Soulstorm, which inflicts a moderate amount of shadow damage to all players every 2 seconds for 8 seconds. This ability does a fair amount of damage, and if a player still has the Shadow Vulnerability debuff, it can cause extra trouble, so make sure you dispel if you can, or use defensives, darkness, or healing CDs to keep everyone healthy. And if you place the orb on the right and take the portal, you meet up with the Bone Magus next. This mob is buffed with Bone Shield that simply absorbs damage until it's broken or purged. The Magus will also cast two interruptible spells, Grave Spike and Bone Spear. Grave Spike deals a small amount of physical damage after a 1.25 second cast, and Bone Spear deals a large amount of damage to a random target after a 3 second cast. Make sure you have an interrupt, stun, or knockback for each Bone Spear, and these mobs will pose little issue. From here you will portal and find the Maniacal Soul Binder. These will periodically debuff a player with soul corruption that inflicts a moderate amount of shadow damage to a random player every 2 seconds for 16 seconds. And this is dispellable. They will also cast Necrotic Bolt and Necrotic Bolt Volley. We saw Necrotic Bolt at the beginning of this dungeon and we see it often in Necrotic Wake as well. It will deal a moderate amount of damage to a target and also place a healing absorb on the target. Necrotic Bolt Volley will cast this on every player in range. Because this mob is in a pack with a Bone Magus, you will want to interrupt as many Necrotic Bolts as you can, but make sure you save an Interrupt or Stun for the Volley and Bone Spear so things don't get out of hand. The Nefarious Dark Speaker will cast Spirit Frost fairly often, which deals a moderate amount of frost damage to a random player. Interrupt as many as you can to keep the incoming damage low, since this is the only cast from these that is interruptible. Death Winds will inflict a large amount of shadow damage and knock back enemies caught in the path once cast. Sidestep this ability so you don't get knocked off and have to take the long run back. Lastly, the Dark Speaker will cast Curse of Desolation, which targets a location on the ground and anyone caught within the impact will take a small amount of shadow damage and be feared for one second. The last mob in this wing is the Soul Forged Bone Reaver. This mob has two abilities, Bone Storm and Bone Spikes. Bone Storm inflicts a moderate amount of physical damage to enemies within 8 yards every 1 second for 4 seconds. If you're melee, you just have to stay out of range while this ability is cast to avoid the damage. Bone Spikes summon swirls on the ground at player locations every second for 4 seconds. Just keep moving to avoid being damaged by this ability. Since this mob's abilities cast a lot of downtime on the DPS, I think it's best to avoid this mob completely. You can do so by choosing the right path on the first portal, and then the left on the second. In the last wing of this dungeon, the Barrow of Carnage, you will find mobs that deal a mixture of physical and plague damage, and a few very important casts to lock down. The Diseased Horror will cast Decaying Strike on the highest star target, inflicting a moderate amount of physical damage and leaving behind the Decaying Blight debuff. This debuff inflicts a small amount of plague damage every 2 seconds and reduces the maximum health of the target by 5% for 30 seconds, and this can stack. This can, however, be dispelled with a Diseased Dispel. 
Lastly for this mob is Meat Shield. This places an Absorb Shield on the mob that lasts 3 seconds and absorbs all damage. Simply interrupt the cast or stun the mob to cancel the shield. Blighted Sludge Spewers are the main mobs to watch out for in this wing. These mobs will jump around the room with Leaping Thrash inflicting a small amount of physical damage to all enemies within 4 yards when it lands. It will also cast two abilities that each leave behind a different debuff. Decaying Filth inflicts a moderate amount of plague damage to the highest threat target and inflicts them with Decaying Blight, the health reduction debuff we saw from the diseased horror. Withering Discharge will inflict a moderate amount of plague damage to all players and leaves behind Withering Blight. This debuff inflicts a small amount of plague damage every 5 seconds and players deal 20% less damage and healing for 30 seconds or until dispelled with a disease dispel. Make sure both casts from this target are stopped. Lastly, upon death, the Sludge Spewer will inflict a large amount of plague damage to players within 5 yards and afflict them with Withering Blight. Watch out for the green swirls on the ground when these guys die. Disgusting Refuse are many versions of the Sludge Spewers that leap around and upon death leave behind the same danger, so be prepared to avoid all the green swirls when fighting these mobs. The Putrid Butcher will cast Devour Flesh on the highest threat target which inflicts a large amount of physical damage and heals the Butcher for 300% of the damage dealt. Any mitigation against this attack will help in not healing this mob, so tanks have your active mitigation rolling. Chop inflicts a moderate amount of physical damage to a random target and causes them to bleed every 1 second for 3 seconds. It's good to note the incoming damage, but it isn't as high on the priority list as other abilities from the rest of the mobs in these packs. The last mob in this section is the Rancid Gas Bag. This mob will inflict a small amount of plague damage to nearby players every 2 seconds and will periodically cast Vile Eruption and Rancid Bile. Vile Eruption inflicts a large amount of plague damage to enemies in a 15 yard frontal and rear cone and disorient them for 3 seconds. Just don't be in front or behind this mob during the cast to avoid what my friends and I have come to lovingly call the Taco Bell ability. Rancid Bile inflicts a small amount of plague damage to enemies standing within the green pools and slows them by 50%. This ability comes out rather often, so just be prepared to move a lot with the mob to avoid the green. Well, I know that was a lot to go through, so let's recap some of the more impactful abilities. Necrotic Bolt is generally cast you want to stop, but as you get into the wing with the portals, save interrupts for Necrotic Bolt Volley and Bone Spear. Dispel the Shadow Vulnerability from the Portal Guardian to make the Soul Storm easier to deal with, and avoid the Death Wind so you don't get flung off the platform. In the last wing, focus down and interrupt all casts from the Blighted Sludge Spewers, and avoid the green swirls when they die. If you focus on these abilities, you should find this dungeon relatively easy and hopefully fun. Well, that wraps up this Shadowlands Dungeon Trash Guide for the Theater of Pain. If you have any questions or comments, tips or tricks for this dungeon, let me know in the comment section below. I hope this helps you out as well as we all learn these dungeons. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click the bell to be notified for the next video comes out. And come say hi when I'm live on Twitch. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday mornings and Friday nights. So if you have any questions or just want to hang, stop on by. Until next time, everyone, I'll see you later.